Welcome to this week's Spin Foil Theory. We're about to take a dive into another mystery from the lore of Destiny the Game. Specifically, we'll be giving high-level scrutiny to popular, emerging, and outlying theories than judging them. If you have any questions or theories of your own, write to us at spinfoiltheory at gmail.com or visit us over at spinfoiltheory.com. And now, let's put on our spin foil hats and get a little crazy. Here comes this week's show. There we go. I did it right that time. All right. Pop All right, we're, we're up. Nice. Nice. Oh, man. Oh, oh. That crack. I'm ready. I'm limber. Let's get this going. Crack all the bones. All <laughs> of the bones you need to crack them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Especially those, like, little ones. I don't know if I could do it. But, uh. I'm going to try my best all one. Of the bones, just, just <laughs> all of the bones? All of them. <laughs> at least at least 100 of the 206. <laughs> Half of the bones. There you go. Half of the You're bones. Need... You just break them all. Okay. I can do that. If I get to pick and choose, <laughs> I'll, be... Yes. <laughs> I'll be there by the end. Oh, man. Maybe. Um, <laughs> well, with that, welcome to the Spin Foil Theory Podcast, everyone. <laughs> this is a... Uh, Taylor B along along with my with my co-host um Lady Lucida. Lucy, how are you this week? Uh, tired. I just moved across the country last week, so I'm a little in the transitioning stages. My sleep schedule is absolutely wrong. <laughs> just to say the <laughs> least, like I'm going to bed at like Past midnight and waking up at eight o'clock in the morning saying, ah, oh, yes, this is fine. <laughs> it's not fine. It's not fine at all. And I'm just like, oh, no, this is not not very good, gamers. I need I need adjustments. <laughs> much. Oh, man. yeah. Sleep schedules, especially when you move time zones like that can be it can take some time just for that to adjust. Really, it's a uh, it can be tough. Yeah. But uh, at least, at least you're where you need to end up. It's not like, uh, you know, like when you go on vacation somewhere. Oh yeah, no, that's the worst. That's the worst. Yeah, you need like a day to recover when you come home. Yes, definitely. Ugh. Well, um, well, that's cool. Uh, we had a twab today too, which is pretty light on uh, on content. You know, now that we're in the sort of uh, what some people are calling the content drought of November 2021. Yes, because the uh, the dungeon, or not dungeon, anniversary things comes out the first week of December, and uh, yeah, there's not really much to do this this month in Destiny because it looks like Bungie is being kind. I wouldn't say dumb, but I th I think right now would have been the perfect time to end the seasonal stuff, and then everything else is. You know, seasonal events where we've got anniversary event, then we have the dawning, and then we have moments of triumph. So, like, yeah. it would have made sense. But, you know, we're not Bungie. Bungie clearly has some sort of plan or something. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not Bungie. I don't work there. I wouldn't know. I, uh, you know, I got I got sick on our on our week off there uh, and and the week before and i'd just Oof. come off some like busy work stuff so i actually didn't get a chance to finish collecting all of the lore book that 27 page book um yeah i mean i've read it i know i know i know what it's about but uh but uh, i didn't i didn't get a chance to collect all of the pages especially after they turned down uh you know how you could farm it yeah uh and I just, I really was unlucky that they went into maintenance. What would have been the last day this week? That morning, I could have just, oh, could have just crushed out the last few. But say, uh, Levy, I'm sure it'll be there next year. How close were you? Uh, I think I was on. It was like partway up the last. The last, the last one. row. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, my friend and I went kind of crazy, and we just uh, we farmed Wrathborn hunts when that was, the. Uh, mm, smart the intended way of doing it we did that a bunch and then um after that once that got patched then i just did uh i'm not sure what i did i don't remember 
I honestly don't remember. Like, I know I have all of the pages. Do I remember how I got them? No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I just... Building. Building the memories. I just... <laughs> I remember doing Wrathborn hunts till my eyeballs fell out, and I was like, this is so boring. And they patched it, and I was mm. like, well... I guess the next best thing is public events. And they patched public events, and I'm like, okay, what is the truth? How does Bungie want us to do this? Like, you need um, to have fun our way. Yeah, that's what I don't... This is the way to have fun. That's what I kind of don't like about Destiny sometimes, is... Uh, they, uh, they say, oh, you can do it however you want, except not that way. That way's bad. Yeah, I feel I feel like it's it's a tough spot, especially yeah. with something as open ended as as Destiny is sort of meant to be in that sort yeah. of a that that MMO part. Like, and it's it's not a true MMO. Everyone, don't 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 get Taylor B twisted here. But uh, it 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 does have. They want you it to get MMO those MMO aspects. feels. Yeah. 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 No. It's no. Supposed I to, like, bring up those feels. Yeah. I definitely get that. It's just it's it's a interesting line. They say they're an MMO, and then they're not, and then they kind of do stuff that's, like, I wouldn't say contradictory, but, like, not... Like, for example, paying for cosmetics with premium currency, that that's not really a thing that MMO... I mean, some... It really, it really depends. Like, that's a thing. MMOs are, like, a dime say. a dozen. So, like, for some... Like, most of the MMOs that I've played, cosmetics don't cost real money. They cost, like... I guess in Destiny's case, Glimmer or credits or, yeah. you know, that equivalent, something that you can get a lot of. Yeah, I've had it. I've seen it both ways. Um, you know, yeah, I yeah. Uh, have, uh, you know, if I think back to uh, some of my, uh, God, when I was younger, I used to really be into those Korean MMOs. Nice. Like I was like Ragnarok online. Like, I think that's Korean, but uh, it did have an anime, but that doesn't stop. Oh, it. that's cool. Anyway. Yeah, I I was. Yeah, I uh, that one that one at least when I played didn't have a lot in the way of uh, of cosmetics and stuff that you pay for. But like this was like at the beginning of it, so a lot of what you were paying for was like content and new classes and and and, and stuff like that. Um, and then I've had it the other way, like uh, Final Fantasy uh, fourteen, the uh, or fifteen, the 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 online one. I think it's fifteen. Um, I mean, it's fourteen. No, 15. Yeah, 14. Um, I played through that uh, sort of end of last year, so not quite a year ago. Um, and they, you know, Square has, Square Enix has a bunch of cosmetic stuff that just makes no sense. Like, you want to ride around on a giant space whale instead of you a chocobo? Yep, for money. That's, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it's kind of tricky with, like, microtransactions and how... I don't know. It's... I feel like the whole microtransactions and now with Peep with Bungie saying, Hey, you guys want dungeons? You gotta buy the Digital Deluxe Edition. It's interesting, I guess. It's a... I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but at the same time... Yeah. Well, it's how they're doing it now, too. It's not, it's not gonna be only that way forever. If I understood them correctly, at least. But it's like, if you want it right now, before the stuff comes out this early, that's how you get it. Yeah. So it can definitely be... But I agree with you, uh, you know, e even saying that. Um, that it, it it's a tricky tightrope, and I'm not sure, especially as like a... You know, I feel like both of us, uh, you know, even though there's a little bit of an age difference between us, I feel like both of us kind of grew up when games were still, like, kind of as is, maybe a little bit of DLC. I, I think of it as, like, to the back, to the old, uh, like, hamburger model. And the way it was yeah. uh, for the longest time is I feel like, you know, you got the burger, but maybe, like, you bought this DLC or you got it from a specific store, and that's, like, the cheese. That's That's... That's your little DLC that that's special, and then there might be like an expansion that comes out. Gaming as a service, and I'm not saying it's bad, but it's it's almost completely different. It, it's like you're constantly play, paying for something, and what you're paying for is also constantly changing. I see. And yeah, just sometimes yeah, I miss just owning, own like being able to buy the thing once, and like that's what you get. You can do whatever you want with it. It's yours. 
but I get I get how online multiplayer games are very different than that aspect. I guess I guess when I when I think of that nostalgia, I think of like uh, you know the single player game, uh, the uh, you know that that N sixty four the cart like something that's never gonna impact the general population no matter what you do with it really. Yeah, true, true. Uh, so definitely, definitely all yeah. That's that's interesting. But uh, you know, all that being said, big fan of Bungie's. Uh, and you know they they are trailblazing this sort of uh, mashup of different services we'd known before. So yeah, I uh, I, I applaud them in in the uh, the trails they blaze with uh, with every decision they make because like honestly they're they're the first one at least I think to do it so massively successfully. And yeah, like. You know, I'm not saying every decision is perfect or every decision is going to be perfect, but they're going to be the the first major one to do it. So, you know, big respect there. Whew. Yeah. Well, with that with that sort of a topical conversation <laughs> aside, uh, let's move into this week's topic, uh, Lucy. This this is one that you pitched to us. Um, a little while ago, actually, and I think it might have some, you know, even even more relevance relevance uh, this uh, at this time in the game than when you uh, first said it before this season. So why don't, why don't you tell us about your theory? All right. So if I remember correctly, it's been a hot minute since I've uh, talked about this theory. But basically, as we know, we've got the worm gods, you know, I guess what's left of them. What, there's only like three left now? Three? Two? I can't math. Yeah, because Akka's dead. Zol's dead. Oh, dead with air quotes. He's kind of a gun now in our backpack. Yeah. He's a gun in our backpack, guys. It's great. Um, Zol? Yeah, Zol's a weird one. Because then they laugh at us and, and say, like, you actually think you killed it? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Toland is like, you thought that was a worm guy? Hugh, 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 Hugh. You're stupid. Mm-hmm. Toland is hilarious. I think it'd be funny if, um, I want him to just come back. Can I have him be my ghost? But that's besides the point. I was, what if he pulled a Sagria or Sagira and just, and just, uh, and just inhabits your ghost? I, I would love that. My, my hundred would be like, you're staying. Um, oh, oh, the quest to keep, to return you? No, not happening. Sorry, you're stuck (laughs) forever. I just think that'd be cool. I just think that'd be I'm cool. just imagining every every the guardian who who would choose to do that is just like yeah I didn't even name that other guy I didn't even, I didn't, care. I don't even <laughs> just care. what's really interesting about <laughs> Toland is uh, Toland's ghost was actually like 120 percent like for what he was doing he was all like oh, go yeah. for it man go for it you're you're the man you're the man yeah. oh yeah Toland's yeah, greatest like, fan remember, girl remember, was his ghost I remember listening to that and I was like wait ghosts can like be okay with the bad things. Oh, this changes things. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, I guess the, the the with with the worm gods they use when they were speaking in the books of sorrow, and when we've seen them talking a bunch, they use the phrase "oh, blank mind," which we've heard before as well with Ahamkara, who also used the exact same phrase "oh, blank mind." Now, I guess the theory that I had was that the um, the worms and the Ahamkara, I mean, they use the same sort of mad, I guess, magic with air quotes to achieve different things, which is so. Basically, what I was, what I, the theory was, is that um, similarly, like you have dolphins and sharks, they both have dorsal fins. But they're not the same species. That's that's an example of something that's called convergent evolution. Where two separate species living in the same environment develop the same sort of characteristics to survive. So like you can see birds that live on islands, they have to their beaks are a specific shape because of the type of foliage that's on the island. Different type of, of cactus plants, they, you know, grow the same similar shape because of the environment so stuff like that so basically the long the, sh- the short version is that i guess ahamkara 
I'm not necessarily saying that Ahamkara and the Worm Gods had a, a, a common ancestor. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that they, because of the the added paracausality of the Traveler and the Pyramid Ships, that the Ahamkara and Worm Gods adapted in the same sort of manner because, as we've seen with paracausality and kind of with the Ascendant Plane a little bit, willpower, like... If you want to make something a reality, you kind of have to, like... There's ways to bend reality to your will, I guess. And that's kind of both kind of what the Worm Gods and the Amkara are kind of doing. I mean, so is the it... Worm... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was, I was going to say, um, is, is that kind of to say that they maybe come from... Because now, now, now we know that there are these, like, nine planes of existence... Yeah, we know there's these different planes of existence. Yeah, and so I, I, I is is it just to just make sure I'm hearing you right. Um, is is this to say that maybe they come from the same or similar one? Because you know, to to your point yeah. on conversion evolution, like maybe maybe it's a slightly different one. Maybe it's not like yeah. exactly. I the mean, same. we've yeah. we've seen. I guess, I guess. I mean, this is from the darkness's perspective, so it's not. I'm not saying it's like 100% true, but you know, you got to look at it through the lens of all the darkness is trying to convince us of things. But in the Unveiling lore book, for example, the uh, the dark, uh, I think, yes, it is the Unveiling, where the darkness is explaining the origin of the gardener and the winnower. One of the parts they talk about, they talk about these little worms that are in, in the black garden. Uh, I'm not, well, yeah, in the garden, not the black garden, but... Right, in, yeah. In, I mean, it's theorized that the Black Garden is the garden, but that's up for debate, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, let me find the particular... The garden or the uh, the playing board, right? Uh, the, yeah, the garden that's, that's, is the... the uh, is the playing yeah. board, yeah. Let's see. I think it's the first knife. No, not the first knife. Uh, I know it's one of these. Ah. Um, yes, um, yes, I see, it's, it's T equals zero in the unveiling. Basically, the, uh, the winnower and the gardener, that they're, they're fighting now, and basically, um, uh, um, our rolling bodies pushed things out of the garden. Worms and scurrying life forms from the fertile soil wet things from the pools and the leaves. They came out of the madness of the primordial space. They thrashed and became large. So that part right there is kind of a little hint, maybe, as to the origins of the worm gods. And they did say other life besides worms. So maybe this is where the Ahamkara and the worm gods came about. They were they lived in the garden, and then because you know, the darkness, and the light, duked it out a bit. They're like, well, I'm out. Adios. Goodbye. Mm hmm. Yeah. So what's what's really interesting to me about this is it sort of leaves this this room to uh, maybe maybe explain things a little bit too, because aside from the the uh the the worm gods and you know pe people who have uh made a some sort of contract with them um so let's include the hive in this one and aside aside from them and the ahamkara the only beings really capable of paracausal actions that that i'm aware of that i that, that come to mind at least uh you know for most of that destiny timeline that uh, the story takes place in is would be the traveler and you know the darkness and so the the idea that they come from maybe the original plane that that the game took place from makes sense if you think of like if you think of the analogy that i think it was mara that gave the analogy this season or petra somebody gave the analogy of the coins stacked and you have mm -hmm. our plane and then you have the ascendant plane as a different mm -hmm. coin I'm guessing that the a different plane would be like the original garden, so to speak. 
It would be a different plane of existence. It's like outside. I guess it would be another coin. I guess further down past the ascendant plane, maybe? Not sure. Maybe Not it's sure up. About, like, yeah, it yeah. might be up. Like, we don't know. But I definitely think there's probably... That might be something we explore later past like the light versus dark saga is like these other coins so to speak because we've only really seen the ascendant plane there's other places too as Bungie has hinted at mm. yeah i'm i'm the only other the only other person who has ever used the phrase oh blank mine is callus which is interesting There's one more Oh yeah, there is one more. It's Callus, Savathun, and Savathun. You're right. Which I'm not sure if they're trying to. I mean, even if we look at the whole. I mean, Callus is definitely a darkness fanboy, as we uh, clearly see. So he could be, and with him literally going to the edge of the universe somehow, like. From a physicist standpoint, that just annoys me. Because you... You, <laughs> you can't... I don't... <gasps> Sorry. Like, well, if he could just, travel... If he could travel faster than the universe's expansion through I paracausal mean, yeah, means, wouldn't travel, that work? I mean, yes, I, I guess. I have to remember destiny isn't real life. It's fake. So, it's always funny watching sci-fi movies and they explain sci like something in science completely wrong. And I just look at the, look at them and I'm just like, no, please, stop. This is cringe, but yeah. I feel like every every sci-fi movie has to have has to have that moment where they explain the physics breaking element that allows yes. them to be in the future, as yeah. as as such that they are. And whenever they don't, I feel like that's when that's when I probably get irked the most. Yeah. Just like, but no. And then <laughs> what's science. really interesting is if you go to the books of sorrow, just going back to the, because uh, the the big three pantheon of hive have actually met the ahamkara before. In the books of sorrow, when they were when they were working, uh, there was the gift mass that they were chasing. Um. There were these the dragons. dragons. The wish there were there was these dragons that were fighting them. And Zivorath says, the dragons, our gods, should be ours alone. Their smug freedom is an insult to me. I'd shut them all in shell in cells, bring them to me. Like, she's very angry. I'm excited for us to eventually fight Zivorath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then... I um, think she's going to be... That's going to be so epic. Yes. Yeah, um... Yeah, because basically when they were fighting the harm... Uh, on the harmony and getting the gift gift mast, Zivu Wrath fights the um, the the wish dragons. Yeah, because it says um, Z uh, now arrives Zivu Wrath at the head of her armada. She fights the harmony for fifty years with strategies and discipline, but the harmony turned to wish dragons, and their wishful bishops wrestle Zivu in the ascendant plane. Zivu falls into dreadlock. Yes, mm -hmm. and then and then um, Savathun sneaks in to the harmony, arm harmony, and disguises so that they might v visect these dragons. So they've definitely are familiar with the wish dragons, which makes Savathun's interactions with Riven kind of funny. Not funny, but like she's like, "Oh, I know I'm... your game. I know how you work." So I have. I have I have one thing that sticks out to me with with your explanation there. So as we've talked about in a in a past episode, a recent episode, Savathun's able to communicate through the Ahamkara, at least their bones. If if there's that possibility, could the hive, I mean maybe ultimately Savathun, but uh, who knows who would would have given the command, could the hive be ultimately behind the great Ahamkara hunt? You mean, like, the actual killing of the Ahamkaras, or the... The uh... cause. Like, the they, they, they manipulate the order to be given. Mm. I don't 
know. I thought that was the Vanguard who specifically said these. It's these Mara. Sp- oh, yeah. Maybe? But I don't know. I mean, like, even in the lore, the Ahamkar are very dangerous. So. It's possible, True. maybe? But, um. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm 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 not sure at this point, but I, I don't I don't think so. I think it might have just been. Hmm. I can I can dig it, and and I bring it up because uh, you know, and and I think this is maybe where where you're going in in sort of the the, the history and interactions there, but you know that the harmony aren't the first the first people to really like chill and hang out or the only, I should say they, they might've been the first in the lore, like timeline, timeline wise, but uh, that we read about. Um, but uh, you know, they're, they're not the only people who were just like chilling, hanging out with wish dragons. Yeah, no, they weren't. Um, you have the awoken and in the dreaming city, there's a bunch of Ahamkara bones now because well, they're all dead. Minus Riven. I mean, Riven is technically dead now, but I say technically, but you know how Ahamkara work. They, uh, they're sneaky. Yeah, because probably one of my favorite lore entries is, yes, it's called Azarim. It's from the, uh, the book, the Dreaming City book from Forsaken. It's probably one of my favorite lore entries ever. Because this, this Ahamkara shows up to the gardens of Asella and he's like, hey guys, what's up? Is, is it alright if I, I'm, I'm gonna, is it alright if I chill here? Because, you know, the whole, uh, Ahamkara hunt and everything. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good dragon. I would never deceive you guys. And then he, um, like, this is probably my favorite part. Basically, he tells them a bunch of stories, and it's these Techians in training, and these young Corsairs, so they're like younger people, and, um, and they listened, and, you know, as, like, this, this part's probably my favorite, um, and Azarim said to those who knelt enraptured, come, let me sing to you of extinction, let me sing to you of lives lost in beautiful places, O audience mine. Sing with me, sing. He bade them rise and led them singing down and away from the gardens of Asilla. He spread his wings and flew out into the empty air beyond the steep cliffs that bordered the gardens. And to those who happened to glance towards the gardens from far-off pavilions, it seemed like a merry parade, a joyous chorus, and they did not hear the singing stop, and they did not hear the bodies dashed against the shore below. They did not see Azarim grow, or laugh, or flee. It's like I said, that's like one of my favorite lore entries. Oh man, that was good. Or like, that's the end of it, because you're just reading and you're like, oh, maybe he's a, he's a cool guy. <laughs> and then no. the end, you don't, you're just listening to it and you're just like, oh, this is cool. And then the last three lines, it's just like, bam, it's like, oh. Ahamkara are sneaky little bastards. So like, yeah. go ahead. Oh, um, I, I was I was just gonna say it. It's really funny that the way, what what was the uh, the the Ahamkara's name? Azarim. Azarim. It, it's really fun, funny to me the way Azarim approaches. Yeah. Uh, the Techians, you know, saying like, "Hey, you can trust me," because it reminds me of of Akka. You know, the honest worm? Yeah, yeah, it really does. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking, because, like, a lot of, there's a lot of similarities between the Ahamkara and the worm gods. I'm not, I don't, th- I'm, because some people had said in the past that, the, you know, the worm gods and the Ahamkara, they, like, had a similar ancestor, and that's why they're so similar. I just think, personally, that they're just using the same sort of means to survive. Whether or not that means they have a common ancestor is up to debate, I think. I mean, they do have a lot of similarities, don't get me wrong. 
but like it's like saying I don't know I'm gonna just go back to the whole sharks and dolphins it's like saying sharks and dolphins are related when one's a mammal and one's a a big fish yeah and, and I think sense. for yeah, it totally does. Uh, because like for any you know I- anyone who wants to be pedantic about it could obviously be like, well, if you go back fast enough, blah 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 blah. Like, sure, I'm sure if you go back far enough, <laughs> there is a common ancestor. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, obviously these 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 animals went on very different paths a long time ago, especially especially when yeah. you consider their how how they have to, you know, they they have similar tactics. And, and similar uh, proclivities, but it's really interesting to me. One thing that kind of sticks out uh, that I think makes makes the argument of conver- convergent uh, evolution or, uh, you know, at least development is that they, they kind of eat differently. Yeah. The, the whole the whole like worm tithing system uh, that that pyramid scheme versus like the I, I don't even know how to describe it like it eats wishes <laughs> like well yeah well, basically it's very similar to savathun's Mbaru that she attempted basically when they i wouldn't necessarily say when they deceive people but it's kind of it's similar to that where it's like oh um because basically ahamkara are very similar to i think they're called jinns in like they're not genies they're like genies but bad i guess is, yeah, yeah, like uh, like the like the, uh, yeah, the jinn, the uh, yeah. the sort of like original mythos. Yeah, the original mythos behind genies and stuff, because it's like, okay, you get what you wish for, but there's always the but, and they the Ahamkar, they always try to trick you, so that they always win and you don't. Like there was the example with one of the hunter vanguards did a card game against an Ahamkar and lost, and well, bye bye. No more Hunter Vanguard. Seems to be a common occurrence. Oof. So many lost Hunter Vanguards. And now we don't even have one anymore and we're sad. Well, and you know, it's 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 interesting to me because it also reminds me of and this this is going back to gosh, I think D one, maybe like year two, because I, I don't think this is in D two, but the uh remember the Aclophage symbiote? Yes. It it it's a uh, the hunter helmet that uh, for anyone who doesn't know or plays plays other classes um it's this it's this symbiote that uh is attached to a hunter's helmet and it kind of reads the uh the flavor text reads they told me it would eat my thoughts and leave me full of light. And if I remember correctly Golden Gun gets an additional shot. Yeah. Uh per use which ooh that was pretty cool back in the day. When the most you had was three? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember seeing a lot of that in trials. But uh, yeah, so it uh, it's kind of interesting that there's just multiple things that can eat and live off of kind of the intangible to, to at least like, the, you know, like the five senses. Yeah. Do so for for me when I when I take a look at this uh, at this theory and, and and think to the similarities, one thing that makes me wonder is going back um, to an earlier part of your explanation when you were reading the, uh, the book of Sar- books of Sar- um is uh, Zivu Arath's reaction to them. Yeah, she gets really mad. Well, but what she says, like, our gods should be our own. So what I wonder is, do you think there's a chance these are maybe a divergent or instead of divergent, like a previous, a previous herald or like had like a bargain with them? Yeah. Yeah. This line, that line there in card XLV, or I guess verse five, three, um, that line there at the end um, saying our gods should be ours alone makes it seem as though Ahamkara used similar, not necessarily, I mean, 
Hmm. This is where I get kind of... Like, this line here leads me to believe that maybe they are... Yeah, like, maybe maybe they worship the Hive Gods? The, the uh, maybe, Ascendant Hive Worms? They're, they're like... Yeah. Or worm Gods, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, because it's saying our gods should be ours alone. Which kind of gets me to think, oh, maybe the Ahamkar, the dragons are, you know... I mean, it's possible, but this line kind of suggests that, kind of what you said, that maybe these, the Ahamkar were like an offshoot species of worm gods. Maybe. We don't know. Well, I would, I would, I would also sort of maybe submit that this makes me suspect that her implication, at least as I'm reading it, is that they're also worshiping yeah. the uh, the worm gods. And so if that's the case, I wonder if, you know, way back when, maybe before they were even trapped on Fundament, or maybe that's how they got trapped on Fundament, maybe the Ahamkara are a species that the uh, the worm gods ran into, but, you know, clever as they are, maybe they tricked them. Maybe. Maybe because that's they how they ended up in Fundament, if you think about right? it. Right. Yeah, like it, 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 they, they use some wording to fulfill it, and then based on the powers that they were granted in return, um, we're able to trick them. Because another line that Zivu makes is, it seems like she's jealous of them running, running around without, without a worm. Yeah, their smug freedom is an insult. Yeah, it's just, it's really interesting because you also could uh, talk about how the harmony, um. They uh, they kind of were working alongside the the wish dragons. So it's it well, could it makes also me... mean that the uh, if the Ahamkara are a you know a I guess a subspecies of worm gods, maybe of the worms that they Zivu isn't necessarily talking about um they're basically Zivu Wrath could if if the Ahamkara are an offshoot of hive worms or worm gods and the harmony is kind of working alongside them, which is similarly to what the hive are with their hive worms. Zeverath could be talking about that, possibly if you interpret it that way. But I'm not, I'm not too sure. That's where I get kind of like, hmm, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. We don't know. This makes me wonder if, if there's a possibility that Ahamkara are a set of worms that, for whatever reason, no longer need to be tithed to a body or like got themselves free of it as well G given the other similarities if that makes sense like if they're worms if they're if they're untithed worms just allowed to grow yeah that could be it could be that i'm not sure cuz like you if i remember correctly there is an entry in in the books of sorrow again where um, I think it's Yol talks about his wings that he has, and all of the other worms that we've seen, they, they don't got wings. Dragons have wings. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, so mm -hmm. it's possible that they are, you know, they came, f they, it's possible that they are, you know, they're from the same species, and then, you know, worm gods went to the darkness, and the Ahamkara went more neutral, I guess. Hmm. Or something. Because, like, the Ahamkara, they're not necessarily, you know, light-aligned. I mean, they do seem to follow the Traveler around. Which is interesting, if you think about it. Because they were at the Harmony, which had the Traveler. And then we haven't really seen... 
any references since then, but then they showed up here. I'd have to go through and read some more of the, uh, about, uh... I believe they show up post-collapse. Yeah. No. Hmm. Which is also interesting. Yeah, so it's like, hmm. So it's possible that, I guess if you have the worm gods are, you know, this species that, assuming they, if, if they are in fact the same species, then you have the Ahamkara, which are, I guess, more light aligned with air quotes. They still do bad things, but and then you have the worm gods, which are more, you know, darkness aligned, which I think is really, really interesting. Let me find, there is another, also, there is an entry in the Truth to Sor uh, tr uh, Truth to Power. Truth to Power? Truth to Power that talks about it. Um... um Yeah, it's in the, uh, it's in Asu, uh, it's Medusa, but backwards, entry, where, um, basically, uh, Medusa, which is actually, basically, think of, think of Truth to Power as, like, an onion. You got the outermost layer, which is Eris Morn, and then you have Medusa, and then you have Savathun in the middle. <laughs> I guess Duelin Karu, then Savathun, but... They're the insides of the sandwich. Yes. But in the Medusa part, um... This is what Medusa says. I've been correlating information on the Amkara and the Hiveworm parasites. Both display a particular ability to convert their host's intent to an automorph morphic reality altering effect both use similar language in their appeal to the host i don't think they're the same species however the hive worms spawn large number of young from relatively few adults always displaying the same physical form and live in communal groups the ahamkara are solitary elusive and seem to alter form to suit or confuse expectations the shared syntax o oh blank mind may be the key um it may be a, I'm going to totally butcher this word, a shibboleth used to invoke an onomorphic effect, placing the target in a cage of O, activational, specific, appealing, and naming, and mine, defining ownership and subordination. Ahamkara and worms may have evolved separately to exploit this effect, just as many species independently evolve eyes. This might place them in the same in competition for the same ecological niche. I would expect a rivalry between them. Which is kind of what's going on as we've seen in the uh, Books of Sorrow. A little bit. Mm. I mean, I know this is technically Savathun talking here. Because it's Eris. No, wait, I'm actually Medusa. No, way, I'm actually... Yeah. It's basically... Layers upon layers upon layers. This reminds me of that uh, that Family Guy cutaway. They're on like Ricky Lake or something, and it's like, actually, I'm a woman. Actually, I'm a horse. Actually, I'm a broom. Actually, yes. I'm Sabathun. <laughs> yes. Um. So it's that's that's. I'm really glad you. Uh, excuse me. I'm really glad you uh, you bring you bring that up though. Because I, I was just thinking uh, during your during your explanation that if if you look at what I guess you can you can also apply this to the hive worms they what they supply is power yes and so if you look at the hive uh, or the worm gods rather as these you know they're these suppliers of power it, you only really have one known client though the krill. Yes. You don't, I mean, like, and, and with this, you know, that we've gone over today, though, this implication of, you know, possibly, depending on what Zivu Rath meant in that passage, and if she was quoted accurately, uh, you know, the, the Ahamkara, but if if we look at that trajectory we were just going over with the Ahamkara, you have them at the Harmony, but not while the Traveler's there. 
and they're and what they do is they push Zivu Arath to a standstill in a war, which shouldn't be possible. Yeah. That's what's really interesting is seeing, I guess, how kind of crazy the worm gods are. Not the worm gods, the Ahamkara. If they're able to basically basically get Stav- or Zivu Arath in, like, stalemate where they're basically just stuck that's pretty impressive because i mean we've kind of sort of fought zivu rats forces a little bit this past year and i think wrathborn are pretty scary i mean in game they're kind of a pushover but in the lore they're actually kind of scary they're like feral unhinged insane monsters and guardians can become wrathborn too which is Really scary, and nobody else seems to be freaked out by that except me. Like, that's really bad. Well, I mean, they if they were able to do it to the uh, the Cabal, um, you know, that, that, that is one thing, but uh, doing it to a paracausal being is a little scarier. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, like, because, like, basically, Repeated Reses was able to, like, reduce the effect, but the Guardian... That hap- that if this happened to, they could still like he like I guess feel Zivu Rat's presence in the back of their head. Not presence, but more like they had this weird funny feeling. Will, Will, yeah. And they were just like, uh oh, yeah. this ain't good. So that's why I'm like, guys, I know season of the hunt wasn't exactly the best season. However, am I the only one who's freaked out by this? No, just me. Okay, cool. Everyone's. <laughs> I'm not saying that Savathun is also bad. Isn't, like, as scary. She's still scary. I mean, Exhibit A, Witch Queen, coming out soon. The Hive have light now. That's pretty freaking scary. Yeah. I think I think they're both... They saw that, uh... I think Oryx vastly underestimated Guardians and paid the ultimate price for it. Death. And now his sisters are like, oh, okay, don't underestimate these guys. Got it. All right, let's amp everything up to, like, 20. Mm-hmm. Which is, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just excited, because I think the Hive are the coolest, obviously. Hive are the best. And I'm just really excited for Witch Queen and my collector's edition to arrive. So yeah. I can have my own Hive it's gonna ghost. It's going to be cool. It's going to sit on my desk and stare at me all the time. I just want it's a Hive be... ghost. Super it'll cool. sit next. To, it'll sit next to my little hive worm plushie that I have. <laughs> it'll, oh, it, man. it'll be friends. So, uh, but one one thing that's uh, interesting to me, where where I was kind of you know kind of leading toward uh, with my comments earlier, is the Ahamkara, especially them showing up in this system post collapse. Yeah, definitely. They kind of seem to be like, how can I say this? Opportunistic weapon dealers, you know, yeah. if their wishes, if their wishes are power, it's like, yeah, oh, you're like, about oh. to fight like the hive, or you just collapsed after the traveler was here. Like, guys, guys, come on, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right. Um, and so it it just it just makes me think that you know, of course, they were in this system. They were probably in a lot of other systems. Maybe we just didn't know about it. But yeah. uh, if sort of back back to my other comment about uh, you know how how they were able to put uh, Zivu Arath in, in in the middle of a war to a standstill, I wonder if that's because you know if if the if the Harmonies uh, sort of warriors and, and generals were were now battling on the ascendant plane. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that's be if. If the problem that she's running into is, you know, what if what if the harmony wished, you know, for for a similar ability or or uh, basically the, granted a similar power to uh, Zivu Wrath and you know that that sort of undying thing, and then you, you know, you just have this army that thrives on war. Yeah, it gets kind of. Yeah. It's basically an immovable object versus an unstoppable force. Yeah. 
Now, thankfully, it it's also interesting to me that uh, in Truth to Power, they they note that uh, they're they're more solitary. Like, I get they might not like live together, but I feel like something that powerful, just having more than one in the same system, is proof that you can't be like how solitary can you really be like multiple dragons were hanging out at court in yeah. in the dreaming city yeah it might just be like they have like territories similar to how like um like for example tigers are most of the time solitary creatures i know all of this because when i was younger i wanted to be a zookeeper that's why i have all this random biology information and just in my brain um i too am enthused by tigers like they're normally normally solitary creatures and they all have like their own territory and you're like if you're a big elf i would say i wouldn't say alpha but like um a solitary male you have your territory and if another male tiger comes into your territory it's like oh you want to fight you want to fight let's go let's go let's dance let's dance right now homie so yeah, it's just like, it really depends on, I guess, the species. And since Ahamkara can be literally whatever they want, if you want them to be a dragon, congratulations, you have a fire-breathing dragon. Thanks, Lord Saladin. That literally happened in the lore, which was so funny. <laughs> During the Ahamkara hunt, him and Ephrodite and Lord Saladin were fighting an Ahamkara. And he was, he was like, I want to fight a fire-breathing dragon. So it turns into a fire-breathing dragon, and Ephrodite just stares at him and is like, Why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> and then she chucks him at the dragon. Pretty much. It's pretty funny. At least but that's yeah. my canon. Yeah, I don't remember how, I think it ends with them killing it, but it's just, it's just kind of funny how Saladin's like, I want to, f it's been my dream to fight a fire-breathing dragon like in medieval times. The Hamkara's like, I bet... <laughs> it's just so funny it's just so funny got you fam yeah i like so. that too i like that too um so yeah it's 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 really but then again you know you get that sandwich with sabathun in it kind of like you pointed out you, you don't know how relatable it is but uh, to your point yeah, it's not it's yeah, not a reliable yeah sorry because like i mean because the top layer it's um Eris saying, it's, it's me, I'm so glad I was able to, to contact you. And then you get a little bit deeper, and it's like Medusa. And she's like, I'm sorry for deceiving you. Um, I needed to be someone who you could trust, blah, 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 blah. And then you get even deeper, and it's like Dueling Karu. And she's like, hi, that was all fake. It's me, Dueling uh -huh. Karu. Hugh, 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 Hugh. Oh, you want to talk about my mom? Ew, you're cringe. Go away. And then you keep going deeper, and then it's <laughs> Savathun telling her her entire plans. And then you go back out, and it's Dueling Karu again, and then Medusa again, and then Eris at the end. Yeah. It's it's an interesting read for anyone listening who uh, who hasn't uh, given it a, a chance I already. I recommend um, it. Yeah, it's over on Ishtar. Definitely worth your time and attention. Um, And... You know the the to your point about tigers in mythology, uh, you know mystical dragons, at least in Western mythology uh, that I'm more familiar with, um, they tend to be solitary too. Now, now they tend to do the you know things a little differently. They don't go out and hunt. They just kind of have their horde, uh, and they're typically like you know they have they have their their shinies and and stuff that they uh, that they covet. Um, and then you get into things like Tolkien where they're uh, a little more intelligent, uh, but it's 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 solitary. You don't have like you don't really happen upon in in a lot of literature. Again, at least that I'm familiar with. I'm ha happy to be, happy to learn about something new. Uh, people out there, but like they tend to be solitary. Like even going back to uh, you know the the myth of Saint George, yeah, uh, you know slaying the dragon. It was just the one, yeah. And then like we've seen this season. I mean like. They have to at least mingle a little bit, because otherwise they they would all die. So, And we've seen the Ahamkara, the, I guess, taken, corrupted Ahamkara eggs spread throughout the Dreaming City. And now there's one next to Mara in her little uh, quarters in the, uh, to go through the portal in the helm. There's an Ahamkara egg in there. Which is weird. So now we have, you know, with the ritual that Mara... And her techians are going to do. She's going to have a worm. Now. 
And then she also, once you beat Last Wish, the Techians cleanse Riven's heart. So now Mara has these two pretty big chess pieces in her hand. Which is interesting, I guess, because we know at some point Mara basically does a fist of panic on a pyramid ship and uh, it, it cracks in half. Which is pretty mm. badass and that better be a cut scene, not a lore entry or I'm going to be very mad. Oh yeah, we, we gotta we gotta see that baby get cracked. Yeah, and also by that point Shirado would also be back, which that's exciting. Mara needs Shirado back. She needs someone to just be like, calm down. I, Everything's fine. You know, I really, I really got to say, though, I feel like if unless unless Jira comes back. How she came back before. Remade or like is the same person that Mara remade. I don't think she's going to side with Mara. Uh Oh, uh oh, that wouldn't be good. Yeah. Not based on the person who she was, um, as told in the in the Marid, um, or at least who I I suspect she was, um, you know, before, yeah, uh, yeah, before the collapse, and you know, I I just, mm, it's it's so tough for me to give any Awoken's relationship, I guess, with Mara. Maybe yeah. more specifically, but even like in their in their society, their their place in it because they're all victims of that manipulation when they were rebuilt. That mm-hmm. that I kind of I kind of just have to be like, ooh, I want this to be genuine, but now I have to wonder because it is really cute their interactions like later, but then when you mm-hmm. find out like the truth about how how they all come to be, you're just kind of like, ooh, was that? Ooh, was that genuine? Yes. So, mm. that's where it gets me. Like, and, and please know everyone. Like, I am not hating on this character. She is so complex, and oh, what yeah, she's accomplished, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah, in in the narrative is ridiculous and a great read, and she is a fantastic character. Like I'm not not hating on Mara. <laughs> Just please, please no, fans. Um, yeah, but that, that is that is freaking wild. Oh, but yeah, I, I definitely want to see how the ship gets cracked open. I would love Jure to make an appearance somehow. Um. And I'm just I I need to see that first hive ghost get made. I, that I really yeah. want that to be. I don't want them to just show up and then they tell us how it happened. No 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 no. We needs to see this. Yes. I beg you, Bungie, please. You can't see it, but I'm I'm bowing as far as I can go. <laughs> like please, <laughs> full full anime bow. Um. Okay. Let's see, was there anything else you wanted to uh, to cover in the uh, in the similarities? Or do you think you're ready to uh, maybe move on into some scoring? I think we can move into some scoring. Okay, okay. Would, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? You go first. Okay. I'm going to give this one, you know, I, I, I came in sort of not knowing what exactly to expect. You know, I think... As we've talked before, we've commented on the some of the uh, the first inklings that that sent you down this path. But I gotta say, the further we go into it, even some of those lines that we're connecting, as yeah. opposed to things being uh, directly telegraphed, I they make more sense than they don't. Uh, and that's coming from someone who fully believes that things can be as complicated as they as they damn well please, <laughs> especially in narratives. Uh, so I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really glad we got to, uh, to talk about this today. I think, I think this was a really cool theory and, you know, especially as we move into the coming expansion, um, in February where we'll have, a, I, I can only assume 
uh, sort of new Dreaming City landscape to uh, to go into and um, new goings on there related to this. I think I think the Ahamkara are going to be very very topical again, especially as we go against these new uh, practitioners of uh, that sort of like high ascendant worm god magic, who now seem to be free of their contract. Uh, so I'm going to give this one, I'm going to give this one 222, uh, Hive Ghost Creation cutscenes. 222 Hive Creation cutscenes, that's pretty funny. Yes. Um, I'll in, in, in the positive. In, in the, the positive. positive. Okay, okay, I was going to be like, yeah. the negative. <laughs> um i'm gonna give it i guess um uh 300 ahamkara eggs Ooh, that's a lot of eggs it is well because like i came into this thinking like uh I mean, it's my theory, so I'm a little biased toward it, towards it, but I think, I know there is some similarities between the Amkar and the Worm Gods. They use the same sort of phrasing and mm-hmm. similar tactics, but whether they have a similar, whether they have a, you know, they were a common ancestor and then split... Or it's a example of convergent evolution remains to be seen, I guess. I can dig it. And it's so funny you use the term eggs, because uh, as as many of us have, have noticed and we've commented, there is an Ahamkara egg in yes. uh, Mara's chamber this season. You know what else hat- hatches from eggs? What? In real life? Worms. Oh! <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and you get them in bunches. You get them. You get. You'll get. You'll get multiple worms per egg. Uh, I know this from uh, some landscape work. You would drop the worm eggs to uh, help uh, revitalize or uh, help out soil. Um, I don't know if everyone does that, but we did that. So. <laughs> um. All right. All right. Yeah, this is this is a great theory, um, and I think uh, the the possibilities and similarities that that there is that connection and the way you put it, like sort of convergent evolution, for sure. I I, I yeah, I, I think it's stellar. So bravo, brava. All right. Yeah. Um did did you have any shout outs, uh, Lucy? Um, shout out to, uh, my dad for being the best ever and helping me move across the country and also help build furniture and everything else. He was very, very helpful and I'm very thankful that my dad was here to help me. Otherwise, I probably would have gone crazy and cried. I mean, cry even more. Aw. Makes me happy. That's so cool. Dads, dads are important. Yes, it's great. It's great when you have when you have a good one. That's awesome. All right. Um, I think my shout out this week is I am going to uh, Mirror Bungie Trans uh, Trans Awareness Month, and uh, just say, I think I speak for Lucy and myself when I say we we stand with the the trans and non-binary committee and we really hope that all of you who can maybe go to the bungee store get the pride pin if you haven't already but also if you know pins and swag don't don't interest you uh definitely check out uh donating to the trans lifeline and uh provide support um sort of in solidarity with that yeah so that's that's my shout out all right well you know with with that everyone I hope uh, you know. I know here. I know here in the U.S. There's a lot of people gearing up for uh, for Thanksgiving at the end of the month. I hope those plans go well. We're actually hosting this year, uh, Kari and myself. So that's we're already 
just deep into it. Yeah. All the all the plans. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be interesting. I'll I'll report back on how on how it goes. <laughs> I promise. Um, but wish wish me luck, guys. Um, and I know there's a lot going on this time of year, so don't forget to uh, take care of yourself, to drink your water, get your sleep, and uh, stay safe. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Doodles. That's off, Guardians. That's it for this week's discussion. Have any questions or comments about this episode? You can reach out to us on Twitter, at Spinfoil Theory, or write us an email at theory at gmail.com. If you'd like to read our show notes, check out articles, listen to past episodes, and more, be sure to pay us a visit over at our website, theory.com. The Lore Network.